What may happen if Yellowstone heads towards an eruption? This is by Eric Clementi on a Discover Magazine blog. On Rocky Planet, well, we know that uh, Yellowstone has erupted three times in the past two million years. 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, 640,000 years ago were the super eruptions. 70,000 years ago, we had a major eruption, and we've had about 80 eruptions since then. And uh, Jake Lowenstein believes that we're over a thousand years overdue for an eruption by Yellowstone. Not a super eruption, but perhaps a major eruption. Now, for a volcano uh, that might uh, not have erupted for 10,000 years, it gets disproportionate amount of media. But it is a super volcano, one of the most dangerous in the world. There's a lot of hype because the media and news uh, made Yellowstone seem like something that is bound to erupt in our lifetimes. Let's remember that there was a BBC documentary about Yellowstone in the year 2000 that spurred the U.S. government to create, to, to establish the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory in Yellowstone. Before, in 2001. Before that, there was no Yellowstone Volcano Observatory in Yellowstone. So the observatory there is just recent. Okay, so there was hype concerning that one good thing that happened is that they have a, a Yellowstone Volcano Observatory and they go out and do field trips. They have monitoring uh, uh, stations there, thank goodness. Now Yellowstone seems like something that's bound to erupt in our lifetimes or could destroy all civilization once it does that, of course, as it has done in the past. But today there are really no signs that Yellowstone Caldera are heading towards a new eruption any time or in the near future, according to what USGS says. So Yellowstone is not heading towards an imminent new blast, but what would we expect to see if Yellowstone were ramping up towards a new eruption. Much of it would be what we might expect from any volcano preparing for a new eruption. Even though supervolcanoes act totally differently than normal regular volcanoes because of the fact that their magma chamber roof could be so much more huge than a regular volcano. Even a simple earthquake around the area or an earthquake nearby could rupture the roof of that magma chamber. Now uplift, deformation and uplift, magma takes up space, so do all the gases that molten rock release as it sits underground, but there aren't big enough openings, open cavern underground to fill the magma, so it has to shove and uh, try to exit uh, through the existing rock, out of the way, pushing it out of the way, and as the easiest direction to do that is up, therefore the magma increases underneath Yellowstone or any volcano, the land surface also deforms and rises in an uplift. And because the land surface is rising, it does not mean an eruption must take place. Magma can fill in under a volcano causing the uplift, so the mountain changes, but never reach the surface. On top of that, other processes can also cause the land surface to rise, like, for example, hydrothermal systems, the hot water flowing above the magma. So uplift needs to be extremely, uh, an extremely, uh, uh, extre to be extreme in order to be a clear sign of an eruption. There might not even be a clear sign of uplift before an eruption. The final complication is that big volcanic systems like Yellowstone or the Campi Flegri of Italy are restless caldera, quote-unquote, and that means that the land surface actually rises and falls frequently, likely due to changes in water flowing underground or rates of the magma entering the system. Also, gas can be building up. When magma rises, it loses dissolved gas like water, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide. And keeping careful, careful track of these emissions from springs and gas vents, geysers, or anywhere on the volcano can give hints that magma is 
rising. Changes in these leading up to an eruption likely will not be subtle. Carbon dioxide, CO2, or sulfur dioxide, SO2 emissions might increase. The SO2 is what uh, smells like the rotten egg smell. The emissions might increase 10 times more than usual or more in a short period, but even big increases don't mean that an eruption will happen, as we've seen examples of increases in carbon dioxide emissions, for example, in Mammoth Mountain, California, where no eruptions took place. As far as volcanic earthquakes, magma takes up space, so when magma moves, it has to make space mainly by pushing rocks out of the way, and of course this causes earthquakes. They're either due to cracking rocks or the actual magma moving in a path underneath. Seismologists look for these rock fracturing earthquakes and for harmonic tremors, quote unquote, harmonic tremors relating to magma motion. So when you, whether you have a harmonic tremor, it's a magma that's moving underneath. As these increase, the chances that magma is moving also increase. Shallower earthquakes mean the magma is getting very close to the surface. So most volcanoes have earthquakes all the time, even when they aren't heading towards the eruption. And this is doubly so for a restless caldera, quote unquote, as we see in Yellowstone and Campi Flegri in Italy, where earthquake swarms are common. They may be due to the magma coming up from underneath or from other fluids like water moving in the crust. Magma can rise and stop as well, so just because a swarm started does not mean an eruption is clearly coming. And you have other indications. Magma, heat is hot. Magma is hot, even places like Yellowstone where the magma is cooler than it is at Kilauea Volcano, for example, in Hawaii. And that's due to the composition of the magma. It is still at 750 degrees uh, Celsius or higher. The land surface is cold, so the magma rises. You can see evidence of that heat. It might take the form of increased activity at hot springs or geysers, uh, even though these can both change on their own will. It might be thermal signals in different parts of the volcano, usually measured by infrared cameras on satellites on the ground. These are the big four volcano monitoring, but one sign does not an impending eruption make. If magma is really rising, getting close to the surface to create an eruption, then what should you expect uh, what you should expect is multiple lines of evidence. Do we see uplift and earthquakes in the area of the uplift? And increased gas emissions and heat in the area as well. These signs moving in concert are better clues to the potential of an eruption. So have we seen heat, earthquakes, and uplift in Yellowstone? Hmm. Well, we know the answer to that. These signs moving in concert are better clues to the potential of an eruption. Also, we want to think about rates. How quickly are these factors changing? And to what extent? Are gas emissions up a little or are they up a lot? Is the earthquake swarm dozens or thousands of earthquakes? Now, uh, there's also one more uh, sign, of course, that you can have, and that is the uh, gravity indication. If there's a, a, a more of a gravity in the area, that means that there's more magma there underneath, which means that uh, there's a buildup of magma, and that's another indication that there's more magma there. Now, if Yellowstone were uh, heading towards a new eruption, we could expect to see all, all of these indicators, all of these factors changing rapidly in the, air, in the area. But uh, the other wrinkle in the size of the eruption, it can be very hard to forecast both the timing and the size of the eruption. Yellowstone, uh, 
there, there were most uh, common eruptions lately, since the 70,000 year eruption, were relatively small. Perhaps the eruptions of a new rhyolite dome that might be big or smaller than the 1980s Mount St. Helens eruption. The three giant eruptions that have happened at Yellowstone over the past two million years are not common. They are less likely scenarios if signs of an eruption were to come. But the size of the gigantic eruption in thousands of cubic kilometers of ash and debris, as opposed to smaller eruptions that might be a five or 10 cubic kilometer, the size of an impending massive eruption, that is a super eruption, would be like nothing we have seen in modern human history. Would the uplift be on the order of tens of meters over many square kilometers? Would it cause the hot springs across the entire basin to heat up dramatically? Would earthquakes be felt in places throughout Yellowstone? The closest we might get to very large eruptions since the advent of modern volcanic monitoring techniques would be what we saw in 1991, the eruption of Mount Pinatumbo. The event that was challenging for volcanologists to predict whether an eruption was bound to happen and add on the complications of how long it might take for the Yellowstone system to prime for a massive eruption and uh, well that way you can't predict. Studies suggest time scales of years to centuries for all the necessary eruptible magma to accumulate before a big blast. If it's on the longer end of the spectrum, how do we monitor these changes that might last longer than lives of people who first noticed them? So any new activity at Yellowstone is closely watched, as we know, by the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, which has been placed there in the year 2001. Caldera status is green, the lowest and only status the caldera has known since USGS started giving volcanoes alert statuses, and volcano uh, Yellowstone will continue to be restless. The ground will rise and fall, as, um, for example, it does in Steamboat that has recently been uh, erupting since March of last year. It's been erupting just about every month since then. Not every month, every week, I would say. What am I saying? Every week, I need some coffee. Um, and uh, we noticed from the monitoring on uh, Yellowstone site, uh, we're going to go into that. The next video will be uh, having to do with the Caldera Chronicles. We'll get into it there, and I'll show you how you can see the heat uh, at the... Uh, they replaced the thermal monitor, thank goodness, at the Steamboat Geyser in Norris Geyser Basin, so it's uh, working now as of May 19th. And you can see that every week the... Um, Heat builds up and it uh, uh, decreases every time the geyser erupts. So uh, we see that taking place as well. The signs of a new eruption uh, do change. Now, um, the caldera status is green, as we said, and the Yellowstone will continue to be restless. The ground will rise and fall, and earthquake swarms will continue. If you Geysers like will change the behavior Patreon account and uh, any here, prognostications that these are the signs of a new eruption. These massive stories grain of salt should be taken. Lots of things have to change altogether at Yellowstone on before the volcanologists might think an eruption could be and in the works. And that's not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.